Hi there, my name is Jennifer Dixon with Thrive Yoga and Wellness and Thrive Online. And today we are gonna do a sort of quick yoga inspired workout that's gonna get your heart rate up, be low impact to your body, burn a few calories, build a little muscle, and hopefully also some mobility. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna get started at the top of our mat, toes together, heels slightly apart in a Tadasana or mountain pose. Soften your knees and tilt your tailbone down. Draw your belly button to spine and go ahead and roll those shoulders down and away from your ears. You should feel the small spot right about where your bra line is start to contract. Yeah, that's what we're wanting to isolate. With your belly drawn in, go ahead and close your eyes. Tins, chin is slightly tucked. And let's go ahead and do our first sun salutation. Inhale, your hands are gonna come up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Soften the knees as much as you need to as you inhale it to halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands. Go back to your high plank and hold it here for five, four, three, two, one. Push forward onto your toes. Come to your low plank. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Let's go ahead and hang out here for just a few breaths. Gaze is towards your belly button, maybe. Relaxing the shoulders down and away from the ears. So I guess that would sort of be up, right? One more breath. Inhale, look between those hands. Then we're gonna walk our feet forward. Halfway left again, inhale and fold. Inhale, bellies in, soften the knees, roll yourself up. Bring those hands all the way up. And then down through heart center, hands at your side, mountain pose. Let's do that again. Inhale, hands up. Warming the body up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, halfway left, shoulders back away from the ears. Exhale, plant your hands. Let's go back to this plank, building strength in our shoulders, belly, booty, quads, all over in a good, strong plank. Push yourself forward on the inhale. Exhale, forward, down to your chaturanga up through upward facing dog and then going to your downward facing dog good job couple breaths here one more breath inhale look between those hands go ahead step that right foot forward leave that left hand right where it is as you draw your right hand up towards the sky nice crescent lunge twist Gazes over those right fingertips, maybe. Draw your belly button to spine. Go ahead, bring that right hand down inside the right foot. Enjoy this little dragon. It is early in the practice, so the hip flexors may not appreciate it. Then we're gonna slide that left heel down like warrior two feet, reaching the left hand up towards the sky. So you should feel a good opening in the right inner thigh getting that right knee to your right shoulder maybe gaze over those left fingertips one more breath and then plant the hands down rolling over to the toes of that left foot move that right foot back take your vinyasa couple of breaths here all right let's bring that left foot forward Keep that right hand planted on the mat beside the left foot. Reach the left hand back up into the sky, twisting out this crescent lunge. Try to bring that left knee to uh, where it is perpendicular to the mat, where you've got 90 degree angles at the back of those knees. Energy out through those right heels. On your next exhale, plant that left hand, roll over to the warrior one, I mean warrior two side right foot. Right hand is reaching up towards the sky. So basically you just roll from the balls of your feet to where your heel is down and your right foot's parallel to the back of the mat. Really bending into that left knee. One more. Warming stuff up, coming back to your crescent lunge. It's a little grounded, so this is more like a dragon. Enjoying that nice stretch along the hip flexor. Ooh, Nelly. And if you want, you can roll around like I just did. Bring that left foot back. Here's our plank pose for five, four, three, two, one.
one, slide over to the outside of those right feet. Bring that left hand up. Here we are, side plank. Starting to build some heat. Vashi Stasana, side plank. You want to try to lift your hips up if you can, but don't lock that right elbow. You can look down at those right fingertips, or you can look up towards your left fingertips. Depends on the neck. Keep the chin tucked slightly. One more breath. Good job. Let's go back to plank. Belly should be getting warmer. Couple more breaths here. Slide over to the outside of that left foot, inside of the right foot as we come into side plank on the left. You can do different things with your foot. If you like, you can come down to your left knee to make it a little bit easier. The only thing is, is you don't want to lock that left foot and you don't want to dump into that left shoulder. So push the earth away from you, gazing up towards the right fingertips or down towards the left. Press into the, those left fingertips to take some pressure off the wrists, especially if your wrist bothers you. One more breath. And then grounding down through that right hand, hold this plank for five, four, three, two, one. Push yourself forward, chaturanga, upward facing dog, and now downward facing dog. Good job. Not too much of a break here, so bring that right foot forward. We're going to twist it out again, just like we did before. And now, push down a whole bunch through your right big toe and stomp into your left foot. Bellies in. We're going to transition to a, here we are, peaceful crescent lunge, maybe. So the right hand is reaching for the outside of that left thigh. Left hand's reaching up for the sky. Your right leg is working. One more breath. Now we're gonna to come to our crescent lunge. Good job, that was beautiful transitions. One more breath here. Now bring your hand to your heart center. We're twisting today. Left elbow to the outside of that right thigh. Bring those thumbs closer to your chest if you can. Sink into that right knee. Maybe gaze over those right shoulders. Bring the ponytail to the wall behind you. That's going to lengthen that twist just a bit. One more breath. Good job. Unwinding here, back to your crescent lunge. Right leg should be talking to you, so let's give it a break. Hands to the mat. Take your right foot back and vinyasa. That's that high plank, low plank. Inhaling from upward dog. Exhaling through downward dog. Catching your breath, one inhale. One exhale. Now we're gonna bring that left foot forward. Keep that right hand grounded. Left hand reaches up in this beautiful, gentle twist. Oh, maybe you get some chiropractic adjustments. Okay, so here is the really balanced challenge transition. Look at that left big toe and stomp it into the ground. Stomp the right big toe into the ground. Suck the belly in. So it's like you're drawing energy from that right hand all the way up, belly in, belly in. Now you're gonna stand up, left hand to the outside of that right thigh, right hand reaching up. You can look down if that feels good to you, or you can look up towards those right hands. Really great stretch along the right side body while we work those left butts, butt cheeks. Coming back to crescent lunge. Good job. Keep the shoulders down and away from the ears. Belly is in. One more, plant those hands down, transition through that left foot to the back of the mat, take your vinyasa, couple breaths here. One more, inhale, look between those hands, walk, step, jump your feet forward, toes together, Heels slightly apart, sink into those knees a whole bunch. Let's do a tiny little ball squat just for a second, getting our toes nice and warmed up because your heels are probably off the mat. And see if you can keep that same activation in the foot with the balls of the feet like pressing together and down at the same time as we bring our hands to our heart center and come up into a chair pose. A lot of times people like to have their feet ducking out 
And so if you just really press down through those big toes in this chair pose, press the knees together, it'll help to internally rotate your hips. All right, left elbow to the outside of that right thigh. Now you've got a couple options here. You can just hang out here, checking in with the toes and the knees, make sure they're still in line. If you wanna open up your hands like a book, go ahead, plant that left hand down. Try to keep your left knee, I mean right knee to the outside of that left shoulder if you can. Super deep twist, bring the ponytail back towards the wall behind you, maybe look up. One more. Nice, now we're gonna bring those hands down to the mat Squat down really low. So now all of our hands, you know, because we have more than two, are on the right side of our body. This is a fun time if you'd like to practice your side crow. So you're gonna have your fingers facing towards the right side. When you first start out, your elbows, right elbow is gonna be right by your right hip bone. Left elbow is gonna be just under the right knee. You're gonna tiny, tiny, like ball up as small as you can. Look forward, lean forward, maybe say a prayer and one or both of your feet are gonna come up. Now, if you wanna take this one step further, you to bring your right hand further behind you, left hand more towards the middle of your th right thigh, and there's nothing gonna be on your right elbow. So you inhale, say a little prayer, lean forward, look forward, and then all of your weight is on that left elbow on this side crow. Good job. Did you get it? I hope you did. So now we're back here in this tiny ball squat, pressing the toes together. Those heels may be off the mat. We're gonna give ourselves a little hug and then little bitty mini break as we press the hands into the mat, lift our hips and come into a standing forward fold. One more breath. I felt like that would feel pretty pretty awesome. All right, bring those toes back together. Heels are apart. Try to even lift the arches up if you can. We're getting some foot exercises. Bend the knees a whole bunch and come back to your chair pose. All good things must be done on both sides, right? So bring your hands to your heart center. Whew. Say a little prayer, right elbow to the outside of those left thighs. Now, you're gonna notice one side is easier than the other. My left side is always tighter. So when you get to where you're practicing a little bit more, if you wanna pause the video and take a little longer on the harder side, I welcome you to do that. Try to keep your toes together and your knees together. Maybe you play with that opening your hands like a book. Eventually the right hand's gonna be in line with the left toes, those toes are all in line, and your hips are shooting back instead of out towards the right. You can, if you'd like, look out the left corner of your eye up towards the left hand. Now, if you'd like to journey with me through side crow, we come back to our tiny little ball squat. We're gonna do it both ways again. Right elbow just below that left knee. Now, even here in this tiny ball squat, don't let your right knee go out in front of your left like that. Try to keep it pulled back. That's gonna help you later on in your practice. Now, first things first, Left elbow outside of that left hip, right elbow outside of that left knee. Look forward, lean forward, and maybe you come into your side curl. Awesome job. Now if you wanna take it a little bit deeper, you bring your left hand further back. You think, oh man, open up left side for me. Your hands again are facing towards the left. You're really trying to pull that right knee back to intensify this twist. Look forward, lean forward, and go for it. All of your weight in that left, oh, right elbow. Nice. Good job, guys. When you're ready, I'll meet you back here at the top of your mat. Toes together, heels apart, hands hugging those knees. My heels are off the mat. Really awesome stretch for the calf and the Achilles, which are killing me today. And then when you're ready, channel your nonviolent Charlie's Angels guns. So hands out in front, squeeze those knees together, and inhale, push yourself up, let the hands go. Good job, shake it out. All right, we're gonna do one more standing sequence to get the heart rate back up and build flexibility, but this time, we're gonna add some more postures in. So on an inhale, reach your hands up. Exhale, hands to your heart center. 
Gonna go ahead, bring that left hand out to the side. Mama, give me money. Put that left foot inside of that hand. So it's on the inside part of your left foot. You're gonna reach your right hand up or maybe forward. Palm pressing into that imaginary wall. Left knee pressing into the right knee. When you're ready, you're gonna kick into the left hand and press into the right, the left hand, left foot, and press into that right hand forward. Here we are in a beautiful dancer's pose for three, two, one, releasing that left foot, coming into warrior one. Beautiful. I decided I haven't been doing dancer's pose enough, so I'm trying to throw that back in there. Your hips are facing forward, left toes are facing that front left corner of the mat, squaring yourself off to the camera maybe, or the TV in front of you. Go ahead, one more breath here. On your exhale, bring your hands down like we are in a grounded airplane. Bend that right knee, hands are reaching behind you, palms down. When you are ready, we're gonna lift off here in an airplane pose. Now, if balance is an issue, leave those left toes on the mat to help you ground. If you're working on your balance, let's play with maybe some glute exercises. So I'm gonna bring my hands to my heart center, come down and back up. You can leave those left toes on the mat and do that same action down and back up, or you can leave the left feet off, down and back up. Let's do that three, four, five, six, seven, one more, eight, awesome. Bring the hands back down to the ground, standing splits for just a minute. And then we're gonna crisscross those left knees behind the right and come down to a nice little curtsy lunge back up to standing splits for eight, seven, work in the booty, six, five, four, three, two, last one, one, good job. Set that left hand, left foot beside the right. Maybe shake out that right foot. I'm gonna come into a Malasana squat for just a minute because I feel like it would feel good. Oh, it feels good in that intense sort of feeling good way. And then we've got the other side to do. You ready? Ground those hands down. Bring the hips up. Enjoy this standing forward fold for just a hot minute. And then slowly round up to a Tadasana. And then we have that dancer's pose transition again. So ground down a whole bunch through that left foot. Toes try to reach forward, okay? At first they might be pigeon toed or externally rotated. I know I tend to duck it out. Um, working on putting, leaving it reaching forward. Right hand's gonna come out like, mama give me money. Left hand's here. I like to use that left hand to help me remember to engage the core. Right hand grabs the inside of that right foot. Kiss the knees together. Try to bring the right shoulder forward. Say a little prayer as you let go of the hip. Hands are reaching up or slightly forward like pressing into an imaginary wall. On your inhale, think, I can do this. Exhale, push in. Kicking, kicking, kicking as you push at the same time. Eventually, you might be able to get into the splits. One more breath. And then we're gonna let go of the foot. Transition into warrior one. Beautiful job. This, you should feel a nice stretch in that right hip flexor as you work the glute of the left. One more breath. Now we have that airplane posture. Reaching your chest forward, but don't let your belly go. So keep that tailbone tilted down. And if you'd like, take off into your airplane pose. Now remember, you can stay here with your right foot up or you can ground your right foot. It's still gonna work your glute as you raise and lower for eight, seven, six, five, four, three. I'm moving my hands to my heart center. Two, one, good job. Ground the hands down, standing splits. We just think it's a break because now we have eight of those curtsy lunges for eight, seven, six, five, four, good job, three, two, 
and one standing splits. Set that right foot down beside lefty, shake it out, and then we're gonna come back to our tiny ball squat. Give those knees a hug, give them a squeeze, and now we're gonna transition into boat pose, but let's see how quietly we can do this. So, hands out again, reach, reach, reach for me as I reach for you, and slowly with control, transitioning into boat pose. Chest is proud. You can have your legs straight if you want, but then I can't see you. So I'm gonna keep mine bent so I can see you. Now let's try to row our boats, okay? Right and left for 10. Here's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Good job, bring those knees into your chest. We are not done. Cross that right foot over the left, squeeze those knees into your chest, let go and hold it here. You can stay here holding it here or you can touch the toes to the mat and back up for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, squeeze the knees together, two, one. Give those knees a hug, unwrap the feet, now we're going to go back to our rowing the boat and if you'd like maybe you row the boat it's like um one of those things at the fair like a pedal boat so we're going to try to row the boat and bicycle at the same time now if you can't do all of the above just do one maybe just hold your boat maybe just row maybe just bicycle but let's see if we can you ready so bicycle with row that's one two three four five, six, seven, you can do it, eight, nine, and ten. Nice, bring those knees into your chest. Last thing, bring that left foot across the right. You're gonna find one side way easier to keep in that tiny little ball. And so, that just tells you when you're practicing next time to do the harder side longer. When you're ready, you're gonna let go, and maybe you join me for ten little toe taps. Otherwise, you just hold those knees in, use your core for 10. You'll feel this in your hip flexors too. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Squeeze the knees together, two, one. Get them in. Nice. Now, whichever side's harder, leave that foot on top. So my left side's harder. I'm going to bring my hands to either side of my hips, say a little prayer, and try to lift something. Oh! Set it down, send those legs out in front of you, and then do a seated forward fold. Good work today, guys. We got our heart rates up just a little bit, stretched out our hip flexors, built some strength in the glutes and the quads, twisted everything out. You'll thank me tomorrow. Enjoy this, yeah. The joke is yoga is all about digestion. It helps to aid in your digestion. That's what all those twists do. Oh, I hope that didn't gross anybody out. All right, go ahead, open up your feet wide, and let's do another forward fold. Stretching out the hammies, because they may talk to you tomorrow with those modified deadlift type lunges we did. I love those airplane dips. It's really great for the hammies and the glutes and it helps to stretch out the hip flexor when you come into standing splits after the fact. All right, bring that um, left foot to that inner thigh of the right foot with the right foot extended straight out, coming forward again. Here's another way to stretch the right hip flexor while we're externally rotating the left hip. If the left knee is not down, that's okay, but if it hurts, put something underneath that left knee. Just a matter of opening up those left or the inner thighs, really. One more breath. You're gonna come up, send that left leg out, bring that right leg in. Square yourself off to that extended left leg and then lean in for it. Now, a little bit of extra credit. If your foot is just hanging out willy-nilly, try to bring that foot back and then bring the pinky toe side towards your face. Holy moly, you're gonna feel it all the way up the outside of your calf. I actually feel it going up to my hammy when I do this. It's pretty freaking amazing. One more breath here. Beautiful. Let's do one more stretch before we call it a day. Bring those knees into your chest. 
and we're gonna let them flop over towards the right. A little bit of internal hip rotation for that left hip. Now, if you'd like, you can lean back. That might intensify it along the psoas. And if that's too much, you lean forward, or you go over towards the right. We're trying to stretch this area on the outside of that left hip. For me, I wanna lean back and then try to put a little more weight into my left arm. That really gets that stretch. Oh, we don't do too much internal rotation in yoga. And I feel like my body needs it. Ooh, Nelly. All right, Ooh, other side, bring those knees in. Get yourself settled, let them fall heavy over towards the left. So we're getting a bit of a twist in, saying a little prayer. You see how this is my tighter side, that knee does not wanna come down. Now play with how you need to be to get the most sensation. Remember, yoga should feel good. So if at any point this does not feel good, don't do it. You can lean into it, you can lean away from it. Make this be your twist, your pose. Do this one more breath. Holy mother. All right, go ahead, extend those legs out in front of you. Remove the microphone if you have one, Jennifer. And then come on back for your Shavasana pose. Hang out here, give yourself at least a couple of seconds. If you can, work your way up to several minutes in a Shavasana or quiet meditation. This is the reason why we do the physical posture so that our brain our bodies are so tired, our brain can just be. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun. Maybe tried something new. I can't wait to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.